How's it going, people? Doing good. Getting a lot done around here. <clears throat> well, I made it through chapter one, and I really did a botch of it. I'm going to see if I can improve my performance with chapter two. Thus, story time continues. <clears throat> Better. Okay. <clears throat> Chapter 2 The Certain Restoration of Judah and Israel. The subject of this chapter is introduced with a concise view of the expulsion of the ten tribes from the Promised Land. The ten tribes revolted from the house of David. Early in the reign of uh, Rehoboam, son and successor of King Solomon, they received from this young prince treatment which was considered impolitic and rough, upon which they separated themselves from that branch of the house of Israel, who from that time have been distinguished by the name of Jews. The revolting ten tribes submitted to another king, uh, G uh, Jeroboam, and this branch was never after healed. Jeroboam, uh, to perpetuate and widen this breach, and apprehending that if the Jews and ten tribes uh, amicably uh, met for public worship according to the law of God, the rupture between them would probably soon be healed. Set up two golden calves, one in Dan and one in Bethel, and ordered that the ten tribes of Israel should meet there for their public worship. He thus made Israel to sin and would to God he had been the last who had made the professed worshipers of Jehovah to sin by assigning them different places of worship for, for, mo for motives not more evangelical than those of Jeroboam the ten tribes thus went off to idolatry. A line of kings succeeded Jeroboam, but none of them, to the time of expulsion, were true worshippers of the God of Israel. By their apostasy, folly, idolatry, the ten tribes were preparing themselves for a long and doleful rejection. An outcast state for thousands of years. This Moses had denounced in Deuteronomy, and this God fulfilled. Uh, Tigla Pilsner, uh, Pilsner, king of Assyria, captured the tribes of Reuben and Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh, Manasseh, who lay east of the Jordan and placed them in Hala, Hera, and Harbor by the river Gozen. One Chronicles. About 20 years after, 134 years before the Babylonian captivity of the Jews and 725 years before Christ. 
the rest of the ten tribes continuing impenitent uh, shall men as are uh, is there, uh, the succeeding king of Assyria attack Samaria took the remainder of the ten tribes in the reign of Hosea king of Israel carried them to Assyria and placed them with their brother in Hala and Harbor by the river Gozen in uh, Medea uh, no, second kings this final expulsion of Israel from the promised land was about 943 years after they came out of Egypt the king of Assyria placed their steed in Samaria uh, people from Babylon Kutha Ava Hama and Sepharaim here was the original mongrel Samaritans. Bunch of mongrels they are. Anyway, that's page 27. Taking a break. From this captivity, the ten tribes were never recovered, and they have long seemed to have been lost from the earth. They seem to have been indeed outcasts. From the social world and the knowledge of civilized man, the Jews long after were dispersed among the nations but have ever been known as Jews. But not so with Israel. They have seemingly, wait, they have seemed strangely to disappear from the world. And for 2,500 years to have been utterly lost. What a loss. What are we to believe concerning the Ten Tribes? Are they ever again to be restored? And known as the natural seed of Abraham? Are they now in, uh, are they now in existence as a distinctive people? If so, where are they to be found? All parts uh, of the world are now so well known that one would conceive the commonwealth of Israel cannot now be found among the civilized nations. Must we look for them in a savage state? If so, the knowledge of their uh, descent must be derived from a variety of broken circumstantial, uh, cir circumstantial traditionary evidence. Who or where then are the people who furnish the greatest degree of all this kind of evidence? No, oh, indeed. An answer relative to their restoration will be involved in this chapter. And an answer to the other questions may be expected in the chapter following. Wow. They sure bait the hook. <laughs> Good job, Ethan. No relation to Joseph, I'm told, but they didn't live too far from each other. 
Lots of connections. That the Jews are to be restored to Palestine as Jews seems evident from a variety of considerations. And that the ten tribes of Israel will who uh, ten tribes of Israel will there be united with them seems to be plainly predicted by the prophets. Well, who can argue with that? Let the following things be considered. One the preservation of the Jews as a distinct people among the many nations whither they have been dispersed now for nearly 1800 years affords great evidence to say the least yeah, that the many predictions which seem to foretell such a restoration are to have a literal accomplishment. This, their preservation, is a most signal event of providence. Nothing like it has ever, in any other instance, been known on earth as far as you know. Except it be the case of the ten tribes of Israel. Other dispersed tribes of men have amalgamated with the people where they have dwelt and have lost their distinct existence. And nothing but the special hand of God could have prevented this in the case of the Jews. The event then shows that God has great things in store for them as Jews. What can these things be but the fulfillment of those many prophecies which predict their restoration to the land of their fathers as well as their Conversion to the Christian faith, most importantly. Two. And I'll start the next video with that. Two. that people have never as yet possessed all the land promised them. Nor have they possessed any part of it so long as promised. Hence, their restoration to that land is essential to the complete fulfillment of those ancient prophecies. They were to possess the land to the river Euphrates, and forever or to the end of the world whichever comes first uh, God promised to Abraham in Genesis unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river the river Euphrates that's Exodus and I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea even unto the Sea of the Philistines or Philistines and from the desert unto the river Euphrates for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land unto uh, of, of the land into your hands And thou shalt not much of one. And thou shalt drive them out before thee in Deuteronomy. 
so they still got to do all the heavy lifting. <laughs> I deliver them, you do the driving. <sighs> Every place whereupon the sole of thy feet shall stand shall be yours. From the wilderness of Lebanon, from the river, the river of the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. Here then are the boundaries of this ancient divine grant to Abraham, who didn't live to see it. <laughs> Him and his seed, but not really. Uh, and his natural seed, beginning at the river of Egypt, a river not far from the northeast corner of the Red Sea, and running into the Mediterranean. Thence northward on the shore of the said sea as far as the point due west of Mount Lebanon. Thence eastward over said mountain away to the river Euphrates. Thence southward as far as the north line of Syria, thence westward, <laughs> including the whole of Syria, to the first named river, <sighs> the whole of this territory, the natural seed of Abraham, were to possess forever. The inhabitants should be driven out before them, but this people anciently possessed but a small part of this territory. <sighs> there was indeed a kind of typical possession of it as the reign of Solomon, which reign was a type of the millennium. It's good as Psalms, you know, to read about that. David, in his wars, which were typical of the of the wars that will introduce the millennium, subdued and put under tribute the Syrians, Moabites, Ammonites, and most of the nations dwelling in the above-named territories. And they continued in subjugation in the reign of Solomon, 1 Kings, but those nations were not then driven out. nor was their land possessed by the children of Abraham. They afterwards threw off their yoke and were extremely troublesome to the people of God. They were only made tributary during a part of two reigns. But God promised in Exodus I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea, even to the Sea of the Philistines, and from the desert unto the river Euphrates. A little repetition there. Uh, For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land unto your hands, and thou shalt drive them out before thee. The land east of Canaan, and away to the river Euphrates, the first named river, was never possessed by Israel. It's just on their bucket list, I guess, even though many of them have kicked the bucket and not seen it. 
their literal possession of that ex extent of territory must be an event still future. Alright. Stop in the middle of page 30. Take a whiz. I know you didn't need to do that. 